everyone. So good to see you today on this beautiful Monday. I'm Elise Witt coming into you from Pine Lake, Georgia, and I am so happy to be with you again on the Daily Antidote of Song. Thanks to the Carpe Diem Arts folks for bringing us all together here. I'm very excited um, to meet our guest today, Elena Lafulana. Um, I have not met her, but I know you all have, and she's bringing us an amazing, powerful, beautiful song for today. But before that happens, I want to say hello and thank you to everyone for being here. This is the Daily Antidote of Song. I'm so happy to see all of you. Hello, Aaron in New York. For, thank you for keeping us looking and sounding so good. Welcome, Elena. I'm so glad to hear you and see you today. Welcome, Susan G. in Cincinnati. Deborah and Robert in Kentucky. Hello, Bob and Mabel and the Bears in Massachusetts. Arlene in Berkeley. Hello, Athena in New York. And Dan in Vienna. Hello, Phil, Pauline, and William in Newcastle. Hello, Kathy in Colorado. Bonnie in Boise. And Sheila in North Florida. I see Hoda in BC. And I see Cricket dancing in Maryland. Hello, Joe in Tacoma Park or somewhere in between. Hello, Marcia in Huntsville, Ontario. And Delhi. Aloysius in Massachusetts. Hello, Julie Alexandria. Oh, Julie in Ontario. Caroline in D.C. I see a bunch of curly tops in Vermont. Bronwyn in Victoria. Elizabeth in California. Sandy in Western North Carolina. And Kim and Annette in California. Hello, Jessica. Jessica. Hola, bienvenida, hello Tim and Jim Harkless, so good to see you, wonderful song leader with us here. Hello Bob and Sue in Seattle, Isabel, Hindi and Storm in the Zooniverse, Zoomiverse, Amanda and Miles in Michigan, hello Maureen in Edmonton, Canada, Anne in Silver Spring, Ruth and Clive in Birmingham. Big breath. Hello, Ray. Hello, Trish in Victoria. Greetings to Penny in Victoria. Sherry and Sarah in Texas. Hello, Linda Rockin on Orcas Island. L-M-G-N-C-T, that's Connecticut. And Kevin, so good to see you here. Hello, Anne and Martha. If I didn't get you on the way in, I'll be sure to get you on the way out. Thanks everyone for being here today on the Daily Antidote of Song. Welcome, welcome everyone. So happy to be here with you all today and very excited to meet the fabulous Elena Lafulana coming into us from um, Washington, D.C. with a super powerful and inspiring song. Welcome, Elena. Thank Bien you. So good to have you, and I'm looking yeah. forward to singing with you. Wow, Elise, do you um do you speak Spanish? You said I my name the best. I fair amount of Spanish. I speak Italian, and I speak quite a bit of Spanish. Um, so yes, I love it. Very nice. Everyone's going to be speaking Spanish today. Should I go ahead and start the song? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. We I think we've done this song um together before, but we can do it again. And uh, it's a catchy one. It's a fun one. Uh, we'll sing it and then we'll we'll talk about it. So it goes a little bit. Oh, there's a call and response. So I'll say, I'll say, Pon le fing, pon fing. You say, A eso, pon le fing, pon fing. A eso, pon le fing, pon fing. A eso, pon le fing, pon fing. And you say the ISO part. It means put an end or a stop. And you're saying to that. And what is that? It's all the injustices we face. So we can talk more about that afterwards. Okay, here goes. se la digamos a todos los que luchan por la justicia y la paz en este país, en nuestros países y en el mundo entero Ay, las mujeres les dice que sean buenas, que se ajusten que se aguanten A las mujeres les dice que sean lindas que sean dulces, no se amarguen A 
los hombres les dicen que sean firmes, que sean duros, que maltraten. Yo no puedo aceptar esas cosas, yo no suelo conformarme. Y dice, ponle fin, pon fin, a eso ponle fin, pon fin, a eso ponle fin, pon fin, a eso ponle fin, pon fin. Como dice, ponle fin, pon fin, a eso ponle fin, pon fin, a eso ponle fin, pon fin, a eso ponle fin, pon fin. Yeah, I can see people sing along. Gracias. Hay personas que quieren decirte a quienes tú puedes amar. Y después te llaman pecadores por quererte bien casar. Inmigrantes viven con horror que los vengan a deportar. Los de la policía que lo suelen fácil matar. Nice, people are singing to the verses too, cool. Vamos todos, ponle fin, pon fin, a eso, ponle fin, pon fin, a eso, ponle fin, pon fin, a eso, ponle fin, pon fin, todos juntos. Explotación, no a la homofobia, no te digo no, no a la intolerancia, no a la deportación, no a el racismo, no te digo no, resiste, no a el machismo, no a la explotación, no a la homofobia, no te digo no, una más pues no. A la deportación, no a el racismo aquí va, no a Donald Trump. Yeah, Eso. Eso. Wow. so fantastic. Yeah, you will see definitely that the folks here they will jump in on everything because this is a <laughs> group. That's yeah, great. yeah, yeah. Um, I watched the video of this. It's so powerful. Oh, I, thank you. I, I love that. That was the coolest, one of the coolest things I've gotten to do. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, where did you film it? Well, I filmed it here in the streets of D.C., um, mostly in uh, the, um, the neighborhood of, of Mount Pleasant, where I lived for many years. Mm -hmm. And there's a little movie theater there uh, that a, a neighbor of mine opened. And it's kind of like a movie theater slash bar. And so I invited my friends to come and do like a little dance party because I don't want it to be, you know, sometimes justice songs are like we stand against things and we sure do. Right. We sure stand against a lot of injustice. But there's also I really wanted to show like what the what the world we want to have. Yes. Is aspiring for. Oh, the name of the bar. It's called Sun Cinema is the name of the little movie theater on Mount Pleasant Street. Um, and, and so I wanted to show, like, I wanted to be optimistic, even though it's kind of like a resistance song, like more like what is the world we're fighting for, you know? Absolutely. Um, and so I thought I could do that visually with kind of like this little, this parade of people walking through DC. That's like, it's kind of a party, but it's also, you know, a protest and it's also people being who they are to the, their fullest extent and things like that. So that's part of the reason that um, that I went with that. And it was really cool. I worked with a local director. I had worked with her before on another song and um, she was like super down to to help bring the vision to reality. And then it was just like my friend showed up. I just like put out a Facebook <laughs> invite and people showed up um, back when Facebook invites worked <laughs> and <laughs> and um, and and people came and it was and it was really fun to shoot. Um, and then in the video, as you probably saw, we also have, um, uh, well, in the, in the recording of the song, we have a feature by, um, Chris Styles Bacon, who's a DC 
famous hip hop artist. I don't know if he's been on the antidote before, but he's pretty awesome. I love him. Um, and so that was cool too, because I wanted it to be a racial justice song. So I wanted to like partner up with someone that could, you know, talk to that. And, and I wanted to showcase DC like broader than what it's shown generally. Like a lot of people think DC is just like full of bureaucrats and it doesn't like mm -hmm. people don't know that it's actually a very activist city where we really care about a lot of different things. Okay. And, and so that was, that was kind of, and showing like the landmarks that mean things to the people who live in DC, not just to like the people that are outside of DC, right. who kind of like impose identities on us that might may or may not actually belong to us, you know? So that was kind of the spirit of that. I feel, I feel like you succeeded in all of those things. It really, it brings both the resistance and the joy and, and the sense of place. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I, it was one of those things where I, I had a vision for it and, a lot of times or, or sometimes when you write a song and you're like, oh, I should do a video. And what is it? What is the video going to be? And I, I don't know what it is. And that's sometimes kind of hard for me. Um, but this one, I, I like I had a very strong vi vision for what I wanted and I was able to execute. It, and I, that was just so exciting to be able to like see that come to fruition. So for me, it was a really awesome, like artistic experience. Well, shot that. because you worked in collaboration, you know, yeah, totally you collaborate with with people that are around you and, and share your vision. It, yeah, beautiful. Totally. Um, well, that's a gorgeous project. Um, you also have some other things um, coming up, including um, perhaps something for Mother's Day. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I recorded a song. It's in the process of being edited and everything. Um, and we're hoping to release it um, in May for Mother's Day, both here in the States and Mother's Day in Nicaragua, which is where I'm originally from. Mm -hmm. um, and th it was it was kind of written. Um, I, w I grew up between the U.S. And, and Nicaragua. And when I lived in the U.S., we actually brought a nanny with us. And this was a woman who lived in my household um, that I didn't really realize was not related to me when I was very young. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and I was in the process of thinking of becoming a mother myself. And I really started thinking about her, not only like not only my own biological mother, who is also in the picture, like it's kind of like I grew up with two moms, but about also about this woman who lived with us. And there was like a class difference. And I don't know, there's there's a lot of issues for me around how complicated a lot of that stuff is, but um, she she recently passed away and um, just a few years ago. And for me, it was a very kind of hard realization and it kind of coincided with me thinking about, I'm actually, I'm like four months pregnant. And so mm -hmm. at the time it was kind of like coinciding with, um, with me thinking about becoming a mother and stuff like that. And so I took all those feelings. I had written a little snippet of it for Mother's Day over the pandemic. I started doing stop motion animation and so I sent it to my mom. The first half was kind of like for my biological mother. And then after my nanny died, I kind of wrote a second verse and it, it kind of feels like I wrote it for her. I mean, there's nothing really explicit in it uh, necessarily, except for that that's kind of what I know and the spirit with which right. I wrote it. But it's kind of like, these are the people that made me and, and I'm very fortunate to have had that experience. And then there's a lot of other complicated <laughs> feelings around, you know, having had a woman who was like not my family kind of pretend or not pretend to be but be part of my family and then she was when we moved back to Nicaragua she was kind of abruptly taken away from me and that was apparently a traumatic thing that I never really dealt with so um where so, is she from in Nicaragua where is she from uh Leon which is where the city that my mom is from um I grew up mostly in Managua but my family is from Leon and I love Leon I, I feel like my heart kind of lives more in Leon um if I ever went back, I'd, I'd probably want to live there. It's a little slow, but it'd be a little different, <laughs> change of pace. But it's a nice um, colonial town close to volcanoes. They get ash, ash falls on them when the volcanoes erupt. So before I don't you know. were born, I think that's beautiful. Before you were born, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I went to Leon. I went to um, Nicaragua. Cool. Band. Um, we collaborated with a lot of different musicians and artists. Um, we actually didn't stay in Managua, but just to land and leave. But we went to Leon and Matagalpa and all these different um, small towns to um, collaborate with artists and musicians there. That's so cool. Was that after the earthquake? 
It was in 1985. 85. So it would have been after the earthquake. Yeah, Manawa, you know, got very destroyed um, in our earthquake in 1972. And so um, that uh, really changed the way that the city is is designed. Um, and so it made it kind of like a more of a sprawly place. So Manawa is not as beautiful as some of the other towns that are, you know, have like city centers that you can walk around and stuff. So that was a, a huge shift for like, you know, a huge life turning event like for my father for example he, the city he grew up in like no longer exists you know wow. so um i oh there's other people that are yeah there's people that have been you know tepe we also played there yeah anyway um oh yeah they're bringing up roma yeah i did watch roma and i um and i i related to it but it was different for us because we brought we brought her with us so she like lived in my room so I I think part I, I I think about this a lot, but part of the reason that I think that I'm I'm passionate about racial justice is because she was like a mother to me before I understood what mothers were, and then and then I started to understand like these social class differences, and I always thought that that was well, that's so messed up, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think Roma kind of gets at it, but from from my perspective, like it was she was so intimately involved in every aspect of our, she didn't have another home to go to when we were living in the States. Like our home was her home, which is problematic in its own ways and whatever. But, um, but just like psychologically for me, like zero to eight was with her. And then after eight, I got cut off and it was anyway. Wow. It's a whole therapy. And so I have to go to some therapy about it, I think. But anyway, that's well, well, sometimes music writing is therapy. So I was going to say it might be the music writing that is your therapy. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. Um, anything else that you want us to know about what you have coming up? You're starting a new job, maybe? Or Yeah, I'm working with the Smithsonian Folklife Festival um, oh, down at the mall. So that'll be fun. I'm going to be doing that until pretty much up until I give birth i think <laughs> we'll yeah. see when the baby comes <laughs> you work on the programming of it um so i won't be on the programming i'll be on the um participant staff side which means that i will be welcoming the people um coming in the experts which this year will be like the na uh, people's uh, the native americans of the americas I don't know how they're phrasing it, so don't don't paraphrase on me on it because I haven't gotten trained yet. Tomorrow's my first day, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it'll include people from Mexico and Canada as well as the United States that are part of Native American groups. Um, mm -hmm. And so that'll be the whole festival. And so when they come in um, with their different kind of like cultural expertises, they'll be staying in the hotel and I'll be helping them like feel comfortable and know how to navigate the city. I'll be helping them book their plane tickets or whatever trans transportation they need and stuff like that. Wow, great um, job. Yeah, it's, it's cool. I mean, last year I was more involved with the festival itself, but I wanted to get, you know, because of my circumstances, I want to get a less physical job, but I think I'll get to know the participants much better this year. So it, it's just going to be a different side of the festival. So I'm excited. I'm excited to have gotten that opportunity and to be plugged in with the Smithsonian. I mean, obviously I love cultural work. Um, I'm a cultural worker myself. And um, I mean, it's just, it's so cool to see what everybody brings to the festival. I mean, if, if I mean, I'm sure m many of the people on this call have been to the Smithsonian Folklife Festival, but if you have the opportunity to join, um, it's really great. It's happening like late June. I know that the last day is July 7th and it usually runs two weeks. So I think it starts like June 28th or something. Sorry, I don't have that off the top of my head. But um, if you happen to be able to come to D.C. during that time, it's really, really beautiful, really special um, festival. I always enjoy it. And, you know, we have food from the places that we feature and, and it's free. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll be in Georgia, but um, maybe in <laughs> let's do the song again, unless there's anything else you want to mention. Um, hmm. No, I, I have some upcoming shows, but, you know, they're in D.C. And I'm glad to I'm not really touring as much anymore because of my circumstances. So I'm happy to be back home with my husband, who's from Georgia, by the way. Oh, um, yeah. Where, so where from? he's from um, Woodstock is where he grew up yeah so very different i try to get him to take the metro 
<laughs> he's very car oriented and i'm like we live in dc yeah but, yeah i wish i wish we had Great. better metro here but we have the marta yeah you have something it could be useful sometimes mm -hmm. it's better than nothing so all right let's cool. see yeah so um so uh I'll, I'll give a little more background on why i wrote this song and why i chose it um i wrote this during the elections um like the last ones not the ones that just happened the presidential ones and it was mostly be it was before even the results came in i just felt like the rhetoric was getting very anti-woman and i love being from nicaragua but one of the th reasons that i live in the states is because i feel like i have way more opportunities as a woman in the united states and so um it just made me feel like oh no is this country that i thought was a place of opportunity to me turning into kind of you know going into machista ways just with all the rhetoric that was happening and 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 so that's where the song started from and that's why the first couple of verses are about kind of gender dynamics but then it kind of broadens out into like a broader social justice song that uh, addresses immigration and um, racial justice and um and immigrant justice and you know homophobia and things like that so anyway i just wanted to give that context before we did it again so that you I know that they're, we're doing Women's History Month here and also um, doing some anti-racism stuff um, on, on the Daily Antidote. So, so the, again, the chorus goes like this. Ponle fing, pon fing. You say, a eso, ponle fing, pon fing. A eso, ponle fing, pon fing. A eso, ponle fing, pon fing. I think everybody's got it. You're, you guys are pros. Here it goes. Let's go again. Woo! que sean buenas, que se ajusten, que se aguanten. A las mujeres les dice que sean lindas, que sean dulces, no se amarguen. A los hombres les dice que sean firmes, que sean duros, que maltraten. No puedo aceptar esas cosas, yo no suelo conformarme. Here's the part. Y dice, ponle fin, pon fin, a eso, ponle fin, pon fin, a eso, ponle fin, pon fin, a eso, ponle fin, pon fin. Como dice, ponle fin, pon fin, a eso, ponle fin, pon fin, a eso, ponle fin, pon fin. Hay personas que quieren decirte a quienes tú puedes amar. Y después te llaman pecadores por quererte que casar. Inmigrantes viven con horror que los vengan a deportar. de la policía que lo suelen fácil matar Yeah, we got some dancing on, that's great Vamos todos, ponle fin, pon fin A eso, ponle fin, pon fin A eso, ponle fin, pon fin A eso, ponle fin, pon fin Como dice, ponle fin, pon fin A eso, ponle fin, pon fin A eso, ponle fin, pon fin A eso, No a la explotación, no a la homofobia, no te digo no, no a la intolerancia, no a la deportación, no a el racismo, no te digo no, resiste, no a el machismo, no a la explotación. 
pasión No a la homofobia No te digo no Una más pues no a la intolerancia No a la deportación Papi No a el racismo Aquí va No a Donald Trump Oh, oh, fun. Oh, oh, got puppets wow, wow, wow. And puppies. That's amazing. Yeah. There's puppies dancing. There's beans <laughs> being shaken and shakers. Well, thank you so much, Elena. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So beautiful. Um, I put the link in the chat for the video. You oh, all, great. please be sure and watch it. It is so powerful and wonderful and it will bring back memories of singing with elena right here on daily antidote or song. that's right that's right thank you so much and um good luck on your um new job and your um coming motherhood yeah. my big my big release my my big project that i'm dropping <laughs> yes your big project yeah, thank you so much for taking the time in your thank very you. busy schedule yeah thank you for being here with us and thank you everyone see for everyone here. thanks for those of you coming in on the live stream now i want to say thank you y gracias a todos thank you to Aaron making us look and sound so good Thank you, Deborah and Robert in Kentucky. Thank you, Bob and Mabel and the Bears in Massachusetts. Thank you, Arlene and Berkeley, Kevin in D.C., Phil and Pauline and William in Newcastle. Thank you, Athena in Brooklyn, and Bonnie in Boise, and Bob and Annette in California, Sue in Seattle, James in the DC area. Hello and thank you, Anne in Silver Spring. Thank you, Trish in Victoria. And Kevin, it looks like you're home again. I'm so happy. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Sheila in North Florida. Cricket dancing in Maryland. And Susan G in Cincinnati. Kathy in Colorado, Linda in Orcas Island, Jamie in Victoria, and Delhi. where am I? Aloysius in Massachusetts, D uh, Cliff in Vermont, Hoda in BC, Dan in Vienna, and Penny in Victoria, Joe in Tacoma Park, Sarah in Texas, Storm in Massachusetts, Maureen in Edmonton, and Marsha in Huntsville, an iPad, Caroline in DC, Don and the Curly Tops. Thank you, Elizabeth in California, and Kim and Hesica in Boston, and Nancy and Ray and LMG, and Anne and Jim and Greta, and Juana La Tejana. Julie in Ontario, Amanda and Miles in Michigan. Thanks once again to Elena. Thank you so much. Gracias a todos. Thank you so much. Everyone have a fabulous rest of your day on the Daily Antidote of Song and see you again soon.